guys, it's Michelle, and I'm really excited to be here talking with you guys about specific ways that you as a small business owner can stay cash flow positive even during this economic kind of turmoil and uh, downturn of our economy caused by the fear really of the coronavirus. And I want to be really frank and say that I feel a little hokey even going live about this, frankly. I feel a little bit like I'm kind of jumping on the bandwagon and, um, and but the, the truth is, is that small businesses operate already on a razor thin profit margin. A lot of us, right? Not mandatory, by the way, we do get to choose our pricing, but most business owners are operating in that razor thin margin of you know success or failure, staying open another month or two or closing our doors, keeping people employed or not, right? And so when these kind of things happen, it's important that the industry leaders come and almost like, a, like Mel Gibson in Braveheart, like holding the flag, like don't retreat, don't retreat, right? There is some really common sense. I'm gonna give such practical advice on this call about what you can do to stay cash flow positive. And I also encourage you to share this with other business owners if you hear something that they um, could be or should be implementing. Because our success matters as small business owners, not just to us, right? This is not trite, not just to us. It matters to the entire country, uh, frankly. And so I just wanted to um, come and <clears throat> give people some specific suggestions. If you're watching live, I would encourage you, or even if you're watching the replay, if I don't hit your industry in this, um, in this training, I invite you to let me know what industry that you are in so that you can, um, I can give you specific examples, right? Because here's the thing, the trend of people kind of doing things back at home and, you know, it's, it's never, it was never going away. We've been moving in this direction for a few years now. And I always joke about being like a half step away from being a recluse. And it's actually not a joke. It's, um, it's the reason you never see me anywhere. But the trend of moving things back home was never, ever going away. The stock market will come back, right? Um, the stock market will come back. We're going to get back to, to business as usual. Schools will get back in session. All of that things, you know, all those things will happen. But this temporary situation caused by the fear and panic around the coronavirus, it will anchor in this trend of everything that we can do from home. So I wanna give you a quick idea of what I already do from home, right? And, um, and I guarantee you, you do some of these things too. And these are things that we used to have to leave the house for, right? So groceries and toiletries come into your home, massage therapists coming to your home. Um, Restaurant meals that are made at home, at home workouts, at home workout equipment, teletherapy, telemedicine, televeterinary medicine, work from home businesses, right? Like there's very little, I even do church at home. So like there's very little that any of us can't readily do from home um, on our own terms. And this situation with the coronavirus, I wanna be very clear, the most impactful impact, the most residual impact, will be felt um, in the economy. And part of that will shift the economy um, even greater towards things from home as we, um, as we go along. And the reason is that some people are trying some of the things I just mentioned. I've been doing them, but some people will try them for one of the first times and they will fall in love and they will start to fall in love with the convenience of um, doing things from home. And so this thing, it will start to um, take even more root. So here's the thing, I wanna just go right into some ideas for how you can, um, how you can start to create cash be cash flow positive in the midst of this panic kind of situation, right? And so um, the first thing you can do, I actually got this um, email from Office Max or Office Depot or something like, now's a great time to reimagine your home office, right? In other words, you'll probably be working remotely for some amount of time, an indefinable amount of time. Now's the time to reimagine your office. So if you sell 
interior design or office furniture or anything like that, like now's a great time to say, hey, do, now that you're actually using that home office, like could it use a redesign? Um, you can always sell gift cards, right? That's a huge thing. I actually write quite a bit. Um, I'm gonna send, I'm gonna put a couple links below on articles that I've written um, in the past about other crisis to the small business market, like snowstorms or what have you. And so um, this is one of the things that I've used really, really uh, positively with um, private clients when I took private clients. And we would take and sell gift cards so that people could, um, you know, buy right over the phone, right? And secure maybe a, you sell kind of future cash at a discount, but you keep cash flow coming in to pay make payroll and um, you know, keep all your, your bills paid and stuff like that. So consider selling gift cards when you know people are not, um, you know, leaving the house or not going to come in and take advantage of your, um, of your services. <clears throat> Brenda Mason is on and she is um she has a book about 31 days to creating your home oasis. She should be marketing, Brenda, I hope you're hearing me, but you should be marketing every single day about um how important it is to start decluttering while you are decoronavirusing, right? And so it's important to um you know talk about maybe decluttering during quarantine and or you know viruses and clutter or what have you. And by the way, this is not taking advantage of the coronavirus situation. The gravest injury to our nation due to the coronavirus will be economic. And in the words of Zig Ziglar, right, like, go out there and sell something. Your economy is depending on you, right? In the words of Ayn Rand, Atlas, please don't shrug, right? We're the job creators. Our ability to weather this particular obstacle matters beyond the walls of our home. And plus, what we sell helps people, Right, so we want to be sure that we are entering the conversation going on um, in the um, in the minds of all of our target market and responding to that. Right, so another idea we talked about. It'll come back. Um, we talked about decluttering. We talked about um, ima reimagining your office space. We talked about gift cards. How about this? How about if you sell technology to make home more connected? This is a great time to reach out to people. I have not heard from my uh, cable company, or it, which is my, I don't have really cable, but um, they sell the internet service that I use. And I don't know if it's because I have the highest level um, of internet that you can buy, but I heard fiber optics is coming and, you know, this would be a great time for our cable companies to call in and say, hey, listen, let's see what kind of speed you're getting on the high speed internet. You might be stuck there for a while. Let's get your um, your speed up so you can stream and, and maybe work from home, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have Lindsay Satterfield of Satterfield and Company who can be doing productivity coaching for working remotely, right? She has a course called Workflow Mastery and all of us have problems with productivity. And um, so when you are, you know, used to working in an office where you shut the door and now all of a sudden you're working from home, productivity is an issue. So, you know, that should be something and I know that's something that she's going to be marketing. If you're a trainer, now's the time instead of canceling, really resell your people on the urgency and the problem they were solving with your training and do a virtual meeting. A lot of people are, they'll say, oh, they like things in person. They like these trainings in person. And yeah, they might. I'm not saying they don't. I'm not disagreeing with you, but now's a great time to get them to test a digital format. You might not even like to do the digital training, but it helps them and it helps you, right? And so, um, you know, one of the things I used to do on my Anything for Money tour when I um, was tr trying to make money from home is I would write alternative work arrangement plans and I would work with other professional women who wanted to create alternative work arrangements and work from home, at, you know, a few days a week or even every day of the week. And one of the biggest successes that I had was I would get the person to write an alternative work plan for a temporary situation Situation, right? Can I try this for a few weeks because XYZ is going on? And that had a much higher success rate because it wasn't viewed as like the ongoing way to do stuff. And then we could work into that. So if you are training, if you're a speaker, consider offering your services, um, you know, virtually. If you are um, dependent on networking, right? Or you're dependent on, um, you know, live events or what have you, consider <clears throat> virtual coffee dates. Um, 
home yoga classes. One of our very own, Barry Risman in, um, in Canada, has the site The Skillful Yogi, and it now's the perfect time to bring your practice home, your yoga practice home. I just wrote, an, I read an article that she wrote about that recently. It's perfect for right now. Um, you know, if you are depending, if you have a business that depends on live events, like if that is your business, you know, you got to understand that what those people want who come to your live events, they want more access to you. So if you have to cancel an event, don't just like immediately refund. Maybe offer one-on-one -on -one time with you. Maybe um, offer a full day of office hours. And whether that is in lieu of a, a live event or just to get to know them better, you will find more opportunities to sell and serve them in that one-on-one -on -one time than you ever could in a live event. Let me think of some other ideas. Um, now's the perfect time to offer your first digital program or your first e-retail, e-commerce um, program or products. Now's the perfect time for that. Um, I was actually, I had this one uh, program a while back. It was super fun. It was a, um, it was a copywriting um, event and it was really though a digital program and I just had a live event of maybe like six or seven people and everybody else was and this is before Facebook live I, I guess I bought some software or something but everybody else um, you know kind of tapped into the training part of the event and then you know we would cut the video off and we would do our work and we would kind of hustle and then we come back together and so that now's a perfect time to take that um, you know idea you had and turn it into a digital program, right? So you want to make sure that you are not simply writing this coronavirus out, right? Like now's the time to uh, to dig deep, to learn a new skill, to begin to do something digital. Um, I, I don't want this to be sort of like 2008, you know? I remember working with businesses in 2008 and I wasn't uber surprised by the uh, downturn in the market. I read a financial advisor who was kind of like talking about it and like this is definitely going to happen and the market is bloated and I remember thinking back in 2008 like how weird it was or 2007 maybe like how weird it was like we were offered a, a um, I guess a home equity line of credit or something on our home and I remember them like approving us for something like you know $480,000 mortgage just on my husband's public school teacher salary. And I remember thinking like, something's not right here. Like something is not right because a public school teacher could never afford that kind of mortgage. And yet they were just giving it away like candy. And so 2008 kind of, um, you know, blasted some extra fat from the economy and it was painful. I wasn't exactly like shocked by it. And so when I was working with my clients, I was, um, I kept encouraging them to not think of this, you know, that economic downturn as like temporary. A lot of people were expecting the economy to rebound in the exact same way that it was prior to 2008. And I kept saying like, it's not gonna happen. It's gonna re rebound for sure, but it'll be a whole different market by the time that it does. And I don't want people in America particularly, I don't want you to, in Canada, but I don't want you to be thinking that this is just something to ride out for a couple of weeks. Continue serving, continue selling, stay in the conversation and look for ways to make your product relevant to people who are still navigating all the problems that you help solve in addition to the coronavirus. So if you have any questions, if you have a, um, if you represent an industry or a company that I did not uh, mention a solution for in my um, training, definitely reach out to me. I would love to um, brainstorm, just put it in a comment or you can message me at m.me backslash women who wow. I would love to hear from you about what you do and what you're experiencing right now and how we might be able to um, stay cash flow positive, right? Remember, your success matters. All of our success matters. We are the backbone of the American economy. And so, you know, Atlas, please don't shrug, right? I uh, appreciate you. I appreciate your hustle. I appreciate your hustle. I know what it is. I'm right there with you. Um, building a successful small business and on my own terms, creating success on my own terms. And I know what it takes. So I really applaud um, your effort and your hustle and your heart. And if I can help you in any way, let me know. Bye, guys.